be awkward. So, what's up everyone? Obviously, this is a different episode of Athletes Uncensored. Just wanted to give you, you know, a day in the life of struggling volleyball <laughs> professionals. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're gonna shoot some cool footage today and like potentially do some drone shots with Ryan Radira. He uh, is a known film videographer in the volleyball world. Let me roll up my window so you can hear me. <laughs> we are on the way. I have my oatmeal. Joe's taking off her makeup from last night. Yep. <laughs> it's just another Saturday morning in the glamorous life. Good times. Good times. Okay, we'll keep you updated. We're driving from Hermosa down to Huntington because word on the street is people are getting citations. So that's not cool. And we all know we're broke as a joke, so we can't be paying those. Um, yeah, so Orange County, here we come. See you there. Peace. <laughs> all right, we picked up Bow, aka Ryan Radira. We made it to Huntington State Beach. Gonna get some footage today. Bow, wanna say anything? It's a beautiful Saturday. It's a beautiful Saturday. I'm watching the AVP right now. Yep, nice. multitasking at its finest, drinking some Starbucks, <laughs> meeting Bree and Macy here. Um, super stoked to be practicing with them. Bree's training to be a firefighter, so she's way more of a badass than we all are combined. Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> I guess that's it, right? I don't really know what to say. And then boom, cut. Let's go. Yeah. Just another struggle of the day in the beach volleyball life. Thank goodness we do have Bree Moreland, who is in the process of training as a firefighter. Part of the qualifications for becoming said firefighter is putting up a volleyball net. So, makes sense. Unless you're like the top 
five teams, everyone has second jobs. So we're all out here scrambling for money because our sport doesn't pay as much as it should and as, as much as we would like. Right. Yeah, we're kind of scrambling all over, but Bree's story is a little bit different than other people because you're training to become a firefighter. I am, I am. So a lot of my days I'm either studying um, a department training manual or working out in a completely different manner from beach volleyball. Um, to be honest, in this weird quarantine time, I actually haven't played a lot of volleyball. I've been focusing more on training and preparing for my upcoming fire academy. So it's it, it's been a different challenge, not being out on the sand every day, but challenging myself in completely new ways, trying to get a lot stronger, um, and working a lot more on my endurance as well. Obviously, there's a, a lot of endurance involved in beach volleyball, but it's it's different in the, in the manner of it's a lot more sprinting, jumping, and then pause. We kind of talk with our partner, go back to serve or reset and serve receive. Um, a lot of my training has shifted from that that quick work and then relaxing to longer endurance periods for maybe like going for a minute and a half with something and then kind of like catching my breath, but then immediately having to go into some sort of strength exercise. So it's been it's been a new challenge for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And it's pretty neat because with our sport, I mean, obviously it's a very physical sport. You have to be in like decent shape. Right. Um, you constantly kind of feel like, am I in shape? <laughs> the entire time. But uh, it's neat because there are a number of volleyball athletes that transition to become firefighters. So is there kind of like a parallel with that job? Because I know Carly Wolpat, for example, um, is training to be one and a few men that we know, that you know. Yeah, yeah, a lot of Long Beach State alumni on the men's side have either transitioned and are already firefighters or are in the process as well, with my, like myself. But um, I think some of the parallels that you're asking about, that big team aspect that we all as volleyball players love, is, is very apparent and present in the fire service. And so that initially drew me in. Um, but then I, I went in on my first station visit and I think one of the other things that was really enticing to me was that aspect of you're constantly training. You're constantly training to better your craft, which is obviously something that we do on the beach every time we step on the sand. Um, so I really I enjoyed that. Um, we're constantly training, and then it's, it's a constant physical challenge, which, again, as an athlete, is something very, very relatable. So coming into the fire service and learning that all of these things are present, it's like, every athlete, you know, is probably going to be drawn to it. Um, so I, I would say those are probably some of the, the parallels, for sure. Nice. Yeah. What's your uh, dream position in the fire academy? Um, or is that the right question? Did yeah, I phrase that yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Kind of like, almost, it's almost or, like the where do you see yourself right, right, kind of yeah. question. Yeah. Um, I have kind of set this goal for myself, and this is not necessarily within the first four to five years, it's definitely a little further into my career, but I would love to be a captain. Um, I think my leadership experience from being on an indoor court as well as being a, a head coach, I, I thrive in that environment and leading my, my team um, and also learning from my team. So I, I definitely set that, that goal for myself down the road in my career. Um, and if I could be a captain working on some sort of fireboat, that would that would be really cool too, just because I've grown up with my family around boats, so I enjoy being on boats. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so fun. I'm stoked. Yeah, <laughs> that's so great. Wow. Would you rather pull a hose up a 20-story building for 10 minutes or, like, go into, like, an air duct, I don't know, vent thing? Um, one of the challenges, I mean, obviously we all have different challenges with like the physical tests and things like that, but one of the things that's really challenging for me is all the upper body stuff and there's a ton of it, but so if, if you asked me like, would I rather pull, you know, 200 feet of hose up two stories or carry a, a whole hose pack up six flights of stairs three times, I would choose carrying the hose pack for sure. <laughs> Because, you know, that's a lot of legs and lower right. body endurance, which is, as beach volleyball athletes, we, we thrive there. Right. So I've definitely had to work on my upper body endurance yeah. for sure <laughs> because of that. So. And do you think, you know, like being a female and representing female like athletics and females in a profession that you don't really see them in, do you see advantages and or disadvantages? And what would those be? Um... You know, there's always the worry, like, is there a disadvantage in being 
being a female, like, am I going to get looked at differently? Um, but I think what's great about most of the departments is that they're so like, hey, just because you're a female, you're not going to be suddenly held to this standard where everybody else is here. If you can't hang at this standard, they, uh, they, they don't cut you any slack. And so I, I personally have enjoyed that. I don't like to be given slack just because of, you know, gender or, or whatever, but, um, I don't feel that there's been necessarily any advantages or disadvantages. There is maybe one yeah, advantage. Um, if I had to pick one advantage for being a female, um, it's just that there's really still not very many females in the fire service, and so the opportunity is huge. Um, but as I mentioned, you know, they, they're not going to drop standards for you. You still have to prove yourself. So I've, I've enjoyed the fact that there's an opportunity. Go out there and prove yourself and earn it. That's been a really rewarding experience for me. That's awesome. And what advice would you give to any girls coming up watching this interview that you might have changed their mind uh, to become a firefighter? What advice would you give to them? Don't be afraid to go out and be one of the boys. Like, go in there, go do a fire station visit. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions. You know, just you have to throw yourself into the environment because as soon as you hesitate, that's going to immediately push them away from you too. So, I guess just no hesitation. Nice. Full send all the way. <laughs> Full send, baby. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so to wrap the show, we obviously have to ask a random question on Athletes Uncensored. So, Bree, I want to know, what's one thing that you've done that you'll never do again? I'm sort of an adrenaline junkie, so, like, a lot of the things I would do, I've done, I'd do again. Okay, so, I love cliff jumping. So, every time my family goes out to the river, there's a couple different rocks everyone can jump off of that are safe. And I go every time, and then I, I like, I always want to go again. And so, I was out there with my cousins, and... My cousin, who's a little older than me, is like, yeah, hey, let's let's go jump the big one that's downriver. So I was like, yeah, let's do it. Um, so we get over there. You have to swim over to this cliff. And we get up to it. And we're looking up. And I'm like, all right, let's go. So we're climbing. You get up to the top. It's like a 50-foot cliff. And um, I get up there, and I just kind of look over. It's like, whoa. <laughs> okay. It's a little bit higher than I expected. I don't have, I'm not afraid of heights by any means, but it was definitely a little high. <laughs> Uh, so I just did it full send, like I said earlier, <laughs> yeah, full send, and it was probably the most painful cliff jump I've oh. ever done. Like it hurt my feet, I felt it go like through my legs, and I just remember like coming up, and I was like, oh, ow, oh, no. So swim back over to the boat, and I just had to like sit there for a minute for sure. And my mom was like, so how was it? And I was like, well, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> One and done. <laughs> one and done. I will Jeez. definitely jump the other ones, but not the big boy. No, yeah. no more. But you did it, so you can check it off the list. Exactly. You know, like I said, adrenaline junkie, I've got to keep doing things, reaching for new heights, but that was a little bit too high. <laughs> so we cap it. Yeah, yeah. But you always have to full send it, because you, if you let up a little bit, that's where we make mistakes. Absolutely. So, you know, you get up to the top, and there's no turning back. You have to jump. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks guys for watching this episode. Make sure to subscribe, hit the like button below. New episodes drop every Thursday, 11 a.m. Uh, we'll see you here next time. Yeah, sweet. Peace. Peace. Hi -ya.